10 coaches have already found a spot on this remarkable monument. And tonight, we reveal the final 10 men who comprise the NFL 100 all-time team. And they happen to be the 10 greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. All right, the six-week journey here on the NFL 100 all-time team from NFL Films is about to end, and in this now quarterback-driven league, it's only fitting that we end with the quarterback group of this all-time great class. Ten of them will be named tonight, including three joining me, Rich Eisen, Chris Collinsworth, and Bill Belichick right here at this table in person. Three all-time greats are going to show up here. We might as well get right to it. Tom Brady, six-time Super Bowl champion, the 199th overall pick in the 2000 draft out of Michigan, has had a storybook career. He is a three-time MVP. Got lock in now, laser focus. A four-time Super Bowl MVP. They have completed the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. Nobody's ever won more Super Bowls. Nobody's ever been better. Congrats, man. Awesome. You too, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love you. Way to go. Love, love you too, man. And yes, he joins us right here at NFL Films. Good to see you, Tom Brady. Hi, Rich. Good Congrats to see you. on the 100, uh, the NFL 100 all time team spot. Well, it's pretty amazing. I think you look at all the names and so many of the guys that I looked up to over the years that were my idols and heroes. And you know, I love everyone that supported me and, and uh, really challenged me, especially coach, to be the best I could be. And, um, I'm glad I'm sitting here, but I'm glad I'm still doing it, too. <laughs> and it started with an oh-so-sexy combine picture. Can you imagine, that, Rich, from that picture that I mean, <laughs> all the way to where he is today? It's the damn Internet. I mean, I, mean, I could have <laughs> tore up one picture and you'd never see that again. But, you know, it's actually a great thing for me to see because it, rem it reminds me of where I started. And, and um, you know, we all have our story. And I started a place, and I always felt I was looking up at everybody, and I felt like I was looking up at everybody in high school and in college and certainly when I started in the pros and um, you know through a lot of help and a lot of support I just learned and I kept trying to get a little bit better and a little bit better and keep growing and keep evolving and I still feel like I'm trying to do that today. Nobody knows this better than you do the journey of what you had in the beginning and when did you know that he was something a little bit different? Well, Tom was uh, special his rookie year, uh, even though he didn't play his, his leadership with the other rookies in the class. We had a big rookie class. Tom took them every day after practice and would run them up and down the field and their offensive plays and uh, was clearly a leader on the field. And then, you know, had a very good training camp in, in 2001. Kind of the crossroads was uh, in the middle of the 2001 season when we played the Rams. That was the week that Drew had come back. And so I, I split the reps between Tom and Drew that week. And the Rams beat us in, in that regular season game on Sunday night. Warner straight back, sets up, now steps up, fires for the end zone, caught, touchdown Rams! And I didn't think that was Tom's best game, but in retrospect, I, I looked at it and thought that it would be hard for anybody to play well, only getting half the reps. So the following week against New Orleans, you know, I said, we're just going with Tom and he's going to get all the reps and he's going to play. That's what Mr. Kraft's paying me to do. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the decisions that I think are the best for the football team. T-E-A-M as in team. You played very well in that game. And uh, I think that's one of the real trademarks of Tom's career is um, there have been a couple games along the way where it hasn't been his best, but the next game has always come back and been, you know, an outstanding game. So that was a real, that was a real turning point, I would say, in, um, in that season and ultimately in the evolution of, of, you know, Tom's great career. Well, it worked out because you won nine in a row. From that point on, that actually was the, the right button to push right there. Are yeah, that you? was our last loss that year. It was the Rams game and, and um, you know, wasn't very well coached uh, by me. Uh -huh. And so I thought we gave ourselves a lot better chance uh, when we played them a second time around. But, um, you know, that that was really right in the middle of the season there. We were five and five, could have gone either way. And, and Tom really came through for us uh, in a big way, starting with that New Orleans game. Tom, yeah. are you aware that he thought you were special? part of the rookie class at the time? Is that news to you right now, or did you know that? Yes and no. I mean, I think having the, him putting me on the field, I knew that he was confident in me. And obviously, 
over a lot of years of playing for him, I realized that he was always going to play, you know, the person that he thought was best for the team. And he'll tell you all the time, it doesn't matter where you come from, you know, I don't give a <laughs> where you were drafted, where, how we got you here, you know, you're here to win. And if you're not the best guy, you know, you're not playing. I think that was a great opportunity for me, who's someone who was, you know, a late round pick. And you think, God, that guy's going to get a lot more chances. And, you know, it wasn't the case. He felt like, you know, if you were on the team, you showed it on the practice field, you delivered when it mattered the most, and, you know, you were going to get another shot to get out there and play. When it mattered the most that year was the Super Bowl. And a lot of people at the end of that game, you guys are winning, then the Rams, uh, greatest show on turf, they are ripping in the fourth quarter, right? This thing is out of control. Everybody's thinking, oh, just go take a knee, get this thing to overtime. And now with no time. That the Patriots, with this field position, you have to just run the clock out. You have to play for overtime now. But you didn't. You put the ball in his hands and came up with the game winner. Did you ever even remotely consider just taking a knee and getting it to overtime? Well, we we started pretty conservatively, and um, and Tom did a good job of managing that game. Got to J.R. Redmond. He got out of bounds. Uh, the big play really was to Troy Brown on under route, and, and uh, the Rams are in a three-man rush. Tom made a great read hit Troy. Troy got out of bounds, uh, and then that really gave us a chance to set it up. And, and you know, Tom handled the last play uh, perfectly with a little return route to Wiggins, put uh, Adam in position. I felt like, you know, at that point, we're sending our best player on the field, Adam Vinatieri, out to, you know, to kick a game-winning kick. And Adam Vinatieri will try to win it with a 47-yard field goal attempt. Set to go, snap, ball down, kick up, kick is on the way, and it is. Good! It's good! And the Patriots are Super Bowl champions! The Patriots are Super Bowl champions! Oh, baby! Put us in that moment. You know, we had, I think it was a minute 21, right, right around there, and no timeouts, but we didn't have to go that far. We had to kick a field goal when it was indoor, and, you know, Adam was an incredible player. So, you know, for a quarterback, when you're in that situation, it's usually just one big play, you know, that allows you to, you know, one big chunk, and, and you've got a good chance. And but that, you're a kid in the Super Bowl, and this is the moment that you've thought about your entire life. Yeah. You just It was just the game? Well, I went to Michigan. There was 110,000 people in that stadium. Damn straight you did. I know. <laughs> and you know what? And, in a, in a weird way, you know, I played in my, in my fourth year in college. We played in a Citrus Bowl. We came back, and we threw a touchdown pass to win the game. My fifth year, we played Alabama in, Alabama, in, the, yeah. in the Orange Bowl. And, you know, we won in overtime. So I actually kind of felt like, oh, here's another bowl game, you know, <laughs> that I get a chance to play in. And, you know, it was just, it was just kind of uh, – I'm glad I didn't have the perspective of how hard it was to actually win the Super Bowl. You know, I just thought, well, yeah, I, got, I won at Michigan. And then I came and I got a chance to play for the Patriots and we're winning this year. And um, it just kind of felt like it was a continuation of a lot of things that I had done. But then – it really realized how hard it was in about 2010 and 11 after we hadn't won in a lot of years. And I was like, God, it was, I never realized how hard it is to win the Super Bowl. It's hard to get there and it's so hard to win it because, you know, you're fighting against all the odds. So it was really a magical moment. And I remember seeing coach the morning after uh, the Super Bowl in New Orleans <laughs> and we both got in the, t in the uh, limousine. I, we probably were working off, probably not any sleep at all. And he said, Nine. Tom, just want to let you know you had a pretty good year. <laughs> and I said, thanks, Coach. And uh, it's been pretty magical. The Patriots are Super Bowl champions. Seymour, the pullback offset right. Play action fake. Brady fires. Touchdown. Two Super Bowl championships Yay. in three years. Look, look, look. Fires to the right. Touchdown. Back to back. Three out of four. Butler has it at the wall. A fourth Lombardi trophy is headed to one Patriot place. We get it done. That play tougher, harder, tougher, everything. Toss to White. He's in. Patriots win the Super Bowl. And if there was any doubt coming into this game about Tom Brady and where he ranks, <laughs> nobody's ever won more Super Bowls. Nobody's ever been better. It's fourth quarter and it's money time for the greatest guy to ever suit it up. That throw to Gronkowski, folks. That one's for NFL Films. And the Patriots have won their sixth Super Bowl title. 
It is amazing for me, and uh, because people don't think of Bill as an offensive coach, right? Everybody thinks of the Giants and all the things that he's accomplished on defense. But you two have conversations, I think it's on Tuesday, where you go over what's about to happen. Flag. If that corner starts running high for the backside post, then you can throw the flag too. Oh, oh you're saying let it dive on it and then bring it back out. Then the Z whips it back to the... Right, 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 I got gotcha. you. To the gotcha. flag. Then right. you have everything. Right. And then Randy's in a tight split, and then you can run him back on a cross across the field if it's like one cover. Right. You know, maybe you have two plays like that in the plan. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. He knows everything about football. It's not just defense, but to sit in a meeting room, in a squad meeting room, and then, you know, listen to his analysis of the game and the things that we need to do to win and the things that we, you know, we can't do. Um, and then to sit in a quarterback room and really analyze defensive scheme and, um, you know, what, what's going to happen on defense if we start in this formation and what if, after we motion and if we line up in this, what are they going to call? And that extensive knowledge of everything was something that I really loved. And I feel like the more input that he gave me, the more I could actually absorb. And I think some players get confused when they get a lot of information. For me, I love the information because I can retain all the information and recall it when I need to. So every meeting that I sat in with him, he's given me knowledge and information and I'm just writing it down and soaking it up. And I think over many, many years talking about whether it's defensive players that we would talk about in our Tuesday meetings or, you know, later in the week, the Saturdays, we always meet Saturdays before the game to talk about kind of our final prep and getting ready to go. You know, he was always someone that I just relied on still do today to, you know, so that we're always on the same page and that we're in the moment. I know what he's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking that he has the confidence in me to execute exactly what's in the best interest of the team. So it's just been a great, uh, you know, it's just a great relationship. Yeah, I think I've probably taken as many notes in those meetings as Tom has. How because so? It's, like, uh, like, what do you, like, well, what I, do you I see up? the game as a, from, through a coach's eyes, right. and Tom sees it through the quarterback's eyes. And so uh, he'll comment to me, well, this is what I saw in this play, or here's, you know, what made me do this, or uh, especially when we look back on plays, like what happened on this play. And, and even that during the game, you know, we'll come off the field and say, what happened on this play? And, and he'll tell me five different things that happened. Well, the tackle flashed in front of me. I lost track of the mic. Then I found him. I came in. I pushed it over here. Uh, I saw the corner sitting out, you know, and I throw it. And then you go back and look at the film, and all five of those things happened just the way he set them. So he has a tremendous ability to see the field and see the game. I had Danny breaking. He broke across. He came down. He was behind everything. He did not take the wheel. I know he didn't. And he didn't take the post. Like, if they're trapped this hard, we just got to get in this little yeah. hole right here. I just don't want you up here. Yeah. Just stay, keep a distance from that guy. Tom, we all think of Bill as this warm and fuzzy guy. So I'm sure it's <laughs> been nothing but a bed of roses the entire time. Give us a little bit of behind the scenes because he coaches everybody mm -hmm. kind of the same way, right? And it's not always been easy. And I think what coach does is he just, with the, he takes all the information that he gets. And in the end, he simplifies it for every position. You know, and you'll hear him so many times on the sideline, whether it's this last Super Bowl or whether it's all the way back coaching for the Giants, you know, his coaching points, you know, this is the thing you have to do, you know, and it's one, two, three. Look, fellas, it's just about doing our job. Just cover your man. Do what you're supposed to do. We're trying to make too many plays and we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Playing the underthrown ball, tackling, jamming the receivers. I do it, just play the defense. That's all we got to do. That's not what I'm asking. Here's what I'm asking. <laughs> when he's on your butt yep. and you're thinking, hey, I'm Tom effing Brady out here. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I have won Super Bowls for you. I've put more rings on you. And at some point, uh -huh. you guys have conversations yeah. that are real, right? Oh, that are absolutely. real. And somehow this relationship <laughs> has survived. Yeah. Well, for a lot, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I think, A, we have, you know, we have a great relationship. We always have. And I think, you know, it's been about winning. You know, that's why I'm still playing today. It's because I want to win. And there's nothing that's going to get in the way of that. And I felt like that's the same thing for him. And I know it appears that we different in, in ways, but we're so similar in many ways that people would probably never see. You know, that his focus is on every day, how's he gonna help the team win? I wake up every day thinking, how am I gonna be the best I can be to help our team win? 
You know, I think when you show up every day like that, I know he works every day and tirelessly to make that happen. You know, that's what I feel like I try to provide too. And that's the example that he sets and it trickles down to everyone else. I don't think you're going to get a story of the time he wanted to tell Bill to go stuff it. No, I mean, I think <laughs> Bill will tell it. I know. I'm no, sure I he wanted to tell him a couple obviously, times too. You know, there's, there's moments where you feel, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, you do that with your, your wife, you do that with your, with, you know, people you work with. I mean, there's, you don't always see things eye to eye, but look, we have, con we have conversations about it too. And I think you talk about them and, you know, you make it work. It proved to work pretty early on in our career. And I think, you know, over a long course of many years, it's just, let's try to replicate it and do the same thing year after year. I know we've had a conversation about this. And uh, I remember that you talked about the conversations, the private meetings that you guys had together and how much you enjoyed it. Because when you're talking to most players, right, you're going to be here, some here. And then with Tom, you kind of get to go to this ultimate level to talk football. Yeah, no question. Tom's at an elite level. Um, he'd be certainly at the very, very top of, of all the players that I coach intellectually um, from an experience standpoint and just decision making. Uh, he can make split second decisions better than better than anybody that I've ever seen. It's incredible some of the things that he processes, as I said, that might have happened a month ago, three years ago, and and he instantaneously can make the right do the right thing at the right time Look, it's really taken a long time to get organized on the yeah. line let's get up under center they're all kind of mulling in there yeah so just go and zone okay. it the same we did against the jets a couple years right. ago it's special it's special what's his signature play in your estimation based on the <laughs> Library it's been of, a lot of plays. I know, but I mean, I, I heard something about J.R. Redmond catching something <laughs> with a certain specific amount that of time. It wasn't a great decision by me. <laughs> what he, do you mean? He escaped to barely get out of bounds. I think he <laughs> dove for the sideline, but but it all worked out. It worked out good. Well, you, you uh, uh, there are a lot of them. Uh, I, I, you know, one of the great early ones I think was the was the AFC Championship game against Pittsburgh uh, to Branch on the post. Ready, play, action, fake. Back to throw. Time, time, time. Shoots it long and deep. Deion Branch, he's got it, and he's gone. Touchdown! Tom Brady launches a 60-yard bomb. Where Tom, you know, drew Palomalu down. Deion got behind him. And Tom put over the top for a touchdown. That, that kind of got us started in that game. Uh, I mean, we could list a thousand of them. Certainly, the the seam pass to Gronkowski uh, in the most recent Super Bowl was, you know, a great great touch throw. I mean, there's a thousand of those too. It's fourth quarter and it's money time for the greatest guy to ever suit it up. That throw to Gronkowski, folks, and that's one for posterity. That uh, was a special play. Other than drafting you, what would be in your mind his signature coaching moment? For you Tom I mean there's been so many I think this last Super Bowl summed it all up you know we had two weeks to prepare for an offense that was as good as there was in the NFL last season it was just an incredible defensive performance and again as a player you want your coach to always put you in the best position to win and that's all you can ask for as a player you want to be you know pushed to be your best every day and he never lets off and I think every player whoever leaves and still plays appreciates a coach that you know, drives you and pushes you so that you want to see the best you could be too. And if everyone is always telling you how great you are, you know, it's only, it's only a matter of time before human nature kicks in and you start to believe it. Well, you're not going to hear that very often. He'll say, look, I'm not going to congratulate you for doing your job. You know, don't expect <laughs> me to come in here and pat you on the back for throwing a bunch of touchdown passes. All right, look, we're certainly not big on individual stats around here, but 50,000 yards, hey. Tom. <laughs> Good for a sixth-round draft. You know, I think probably the greatest team to ever play was our 2017. You know, we had dominated the entire season. We went to, to Dallas. They were undefeated, and we beat them pretty bad. We went to Indy. They were undefeated. We beat them. We scored every time we touched the ball in Buffalo late in the season. And Coach would come in on Monday, and I swear to God, you thought we'd lo we lost 50 to nothing. <laughs> you know, and you're like, how the hell? We didn't punt. You know, and we come in, and you thought that we got beat. None of this matters. It's about a one-week season. Yep. It's a one-week season. We weren't ready to go, pay the price for it, and we're really, you know, pretty fortunate to pull that one out. We need to have a good week. We need to have a good week. We're in tomorrow, fellas. 
where last week was your week off. You got to get the ball in, in the red area, fellas. We left a lot of points out there. We would never have been in the Super Bowl 18 and 0 with the chance to be 19 and 0 had we not had that coaching. I want to ask you about one game that may be my favorite game I ever called in my life. It was the last game of the year that year against the Giants. Good day to throw. Yeah, is that always. Yeah. Well, no, not all. <laughs> It absolutely had no impact on the season. It was like uh, Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed fighting at the end of the, one of those Rockies just for fun kind of thing. Tell me a little bit about that game. It was unbelievable. Well, I think every game is an important game if you're competing in it. I think if you're a competitor, they all mean something. Did you think of pulling of, of not putting everybody out on the field? And no, because it was about competition. Uh, everybody wanted to compete. Uh, Did you think me. about being perfect? Getting that 16 and 0. I was thinking more about beating the Giants, you know, because the other ones, whether they did or didn't happen, were already in the books. So it's just about that. It's just about that one week. The Patriots, the first team since the 1972 Miami Dolphins to go through a regular season undefeated, 16 and 0, perfection personified by the Patriots. We really didn't think about the history of 16 and 0. I mean, that's the whole. Well, of course you want just, you want to go undefeated, of course, but right. We would have wanted to beat the Giants if we were, you know, seven and eight or whatever numbers are. I think going back to Tom, one of the, you know, I think it wouldn't be a signature play, but it was. <laughs> He's just nodding his head. What do you say? I said, that's him. <laughs> it's absolutely. <laughs> that's Coach right We there. just got it right that's, there. I mean, honestly, it's one game. You know, you got a chance to win. That's what you do. Not a signature play, but but one of the great <laughs> yeah. plays, one of the great Tom Brady plays of all time yes. was the scramble against the Bears one-on-one -on -one against Brian Urlacher and made him miss in the open field. I'll tell you, that's one you don't see very often. You got Urlacher going against Tom Brady in the open field. Tom Brady sees the opening, and he does not pick up the first down if Urlacher makes the tackle there. We know Brian's in the Hall of Fame. Yes. But we know he can do it. We know he can run. <laughs> There's only a couple of those in the library. But yeah, part of your 1,000 yard I got over 1,000 this year. Career. That's a lifetime achievement award. That might be the Hall of Shame, <laughs> you know. Well, so, it's part of the reason why you're on the wall, Tom. Yeah, exactly. you know, It's part of the reason why you're here in the NFL 100 all-time team. So uh, when we come back, we're going to add yet another member, not only to the all-time team wall, uh, right here as well. Uh, on our NFL film I'm team and another member of our monument has been added six more rings on the wall It is you Tom Brady right up there next to the Pretty coach cool. Just like right here on our set. That's a good spot. That's a good spot indeed And let's now add another quarterback to this roster straight from Mississippi Brett Favre 20 seasons in the National Football League Hey, let's go every drive. We got to think that way. We really got to think that way. He flipped it into the end zone backhand. Brett Favre is something else. Three-time MVP and 11-time Pro Bowler, and he retired as the owner of every major career passing record. He is now a member of the NFL 100 all-time team. Good to see you, Brett Favre. Thanks for having me. You no, know, of course. Well, thanks for being here. Appreciate that. When did you guys first meet? Do, do you remember that? I think we actually yeah. talked. It was on a, a preseason. I think it was preseason game in Green Bay. I think. But he. Would you uh, remember, Tom? Yep. Am I, am I right? It was 05, yep. 06, 2006. We played in the preseason. And, but we uh, played you one other time before that, which you killed us in 2002 in the rain game. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> they won out of 15 they weren't, they weren't having a great year, and, and it's a quick story, but sure. they showed their inactive list, and I think every corner on their roster was inactive, so they signed a bunch of guys on the street, so I was so excited, and Brett came in, and I just remember him running around, unbuckling his chin strap and throwing touchdown passes. Favre is just right on the money. Favre play action, pump fakes once, throws the left side of the end zone, leaping attempt made, touchdown! touchdown! Back line of the end zone, Bubba Franks, wow! Well, uh, Brett, I mean, what does it mean for you? Obviously, you thought you probably were done with all the accolades that you could ever have in your career or life about being named one of the 100 members of this yeah, team. Yeah, you know, I'm extremely honored. When I was a little kid, um, I wanted to play pro football. I wanted to be Roger Stallback. I loved Roger. Um, that's who I looked up to. He's my favorite player, and he's still my, my guy. And to be able to do exactly what I wanted to do and do it for so long 
and to have accomplished so much at one time, maybe not so much now, have all the passing records. I mean, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, you know, I, when I was a kid, we only got two channels, you know, so you, you, you didn't have NFL films, you didn't have NFL Network, you didn't have, I couldn't watch everybody. So if Dallas was not a regional, I had to watch the Saints. And I loved Archie Manning, but they were horrible. Uh, but he was the bright spot. My deal was Roger Staubach and Archie Manning. I never thought about Pro Bowls, never thought about MVPs. I envisioned what it would be like to run out on the field for a Super Bowl and how cool that would be. And so I got to live that. Everything that has come after has been like, are you kidding me? It wasn't like I'm waiting for, well, when are they going to retire my number? Just playing and, and being able to, to be Roger Stallback or be Archie Manning um, is enough. And, and, and I mean that with all honesty. I really do believe you're the one player out of all that I've played against or met that if all of a sudden nobody got paid to play football, you still would have played. I would have. You would have played. I would have. And, and, and some of the things that you did on the field are still a little mind-boggling. I mean, Good and bad. Good and bad. <laughs> I'll give you that. But throwing with your feet off the ground more often than not. Mm -hmm. Can you possibly explain to me, Tom, I'm sure every fundamental coach you ever had yeah. is like, this, this won't work. You can't play quarterback like that. How did that happen? You know, I, honestly, uh, by accident, my dad was my coach, and he was old school. Rather than do seven on seven, we did Oklahoma drill. You know, if I were to ever say, Dad, you know, maybe we should look at throwing. He'd say, I'm coaching the team. You do what I tell you, and so be it. We never worked on fundamentals. As a high school senior, I could throw it 75 yards, but, you know, when, when teams would come in, colleges and the recruiting coach would come in he would say uh, coach Farr uh, I want to see your son throw and he goes well you better come and watch pregame and, and, I'm, and I'm being honest because we ran the wishbone and, and the wing tee and so I, I guess what I'm getting at is we never worked on fundamentals and footwork I, you know I didn't know what reading you know flat defender on a curl drag a high low uh, you know I, that stuff when I got to college I'll never forget when I became a starter as a, as a freshman. We ran the eye formation, we ran option, tall sweep, and we'll, we would sprint out. We, there was never any, all right, we're going to read the weak side defender. Or this. But I said, if they blitz, what do I do? And my coach very seriously looked at me and said, you make something happen. <laughs> and I went, I like that. <laughs> and that's kind, of the way, that's kind of the way I played. Farm came off the bench and led the Golden Eagles in a comeback victory in his varsity debut. Yeah, I didn't know how good I was. I didn't know how bad I was. I just knew that I was going to do all I could. And at times, maybe it, it looked bad, but I was, I was going to come right back. I was resilient. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, it, it's just, just kind of how I played. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I got to tell you, you're going to hate me for bringing this up. The playoff game, you threw six interceptions, probably made the biggest impression on me of any game I had ever seen you play. Far play action, unloads, near side, and Nias Williams has got it. There's Far back. Has it picked off. Far has the ball deflected and intercepted. And bad just got worse for the Green Bay Packers. I'm sorry. I'm, I no, really no. am. I'm sorry. But you, it didn't matter that you, you would have thrown 15 interceptions. Most people, they get a certain number. It's like, okay, we're going to check it down. Let's, let's get out of this game, whatever. You always thought you were going to win the game, didn't you? I, I did. You know, and it's funny because that game, after the fourth one, I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Belichick loves it. I, I go to the sidelines, and Mike Sherman says, I think I'm just going to take you out. And I said, uh, if I throw two more, I'll break a record. <laughs> <laughs> did you really say that? Yeah. What do you say back? Go on. Go ahead. Not that I wanted to break the sure. record, but hell, come this far. Let's win. You, you still thought you were going to win. I could have thrown check downs and check downs and check downs. And there's probably times in my career I probably should have. 
I, I, I Super Bowl knew. against the Super Bowl against New England would have been a nice throw a couple yeah. check downs <laughs> instead of those. I was coaching to get you. Tell us about prepping for yeah. Brett. Uh, well, first of all, there's not many not many people in the NFL that can say they passed on Brett twice. Twice in the '91 draft, I passed on you. So how bad is that? But you know what, Bill? It worked out. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, a decade later. Yeah. Decade. Yeah, but you know. See, I knew I could get Tom around 199. <laughs> <laughs> It's cagey. Exactly. It's cagey. Uh, well, just what you said, Chris. His, Brett was impossible to prepare for because you didn't know what he was going to do. I mean, post, check down, scramble, extend plays. Uh, everybody was alive. Everybody was at the point of attack. And every receiver was the primary receiver. And yeah. Yeah. it could happen sooner in the play, later in the play. Um, he, was, he was really tough to prepare for. But he, he killed us in Super Bowl. It was a good game. I, I tell you that the... the the play that is talked about the most is a kickoff return. Well, not not not, <laughs> not for a quarterback. <laughs> it's the first play of the game. Yeah. You know, okay. Bill obviously is the ultimate schemer, and you know, you you really have to prepare hard. That being said, in '96, I was probably the furthest thing from a schemer and strategist, yeah. and I just kind of was like, hey, whatever. Now are you all right? Yeah. No more rocket balls, please. Well, I was chinged up. No, I know. We had worked very minimally on all-out blitz checks. That's not his M.O. He wants his guys to know exactly what to do first. Don't outsmart yourselves. That's kind of the way I look at, at Bill and how he coaches. We're going to know what to do. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll figure out if we're going to you know, disguise and do all this stuff later. But you're going to know what to do. So you're not going to outsmart them. So the... I walk up to the line, and we hadn't worked on a, on a zero blitz, potentially an all-out, more than you can block type of. No free safety in the middle no of the field and all that. And all week long, sitting in the hotel, and you, you watch the r replays. And Super Bowl 24 about to get underway. And they keep showing Joe Montana checking to 59 Razor. Black 59 Razor! Black 59 Razor! 49 South! <laughs> And I thought to myself, man, you know how cool it would be in New Orleans if I, I'm, I, I'm being 100% honest, how cool it would be if I could check to a razor and hit a touchdown in this game. But I quickly was like, well, they don't blitz. Lo and behold, I said, this kind of looks like maybe something's coming. I'm like, nah. But I had, you know, you don't have all day to make this decision. And so I, I checked to it. Second down and nine. Brett Favre appears to be changing plays at the line of scrimmage. He's got time. He's throwing it downfield. He's got him. Wide open. It is going to be a touchdown to Andre Risen. You know, I'm running around with my helmet off, and some people may say, well, look, he's trying to, you know, it's all about me. What I was excited about was, can you believe that this actually worked? <laughs> and Risen got the check. Yeah. And Ryzen got the check. <laughs> We've been here three weeks. Right here. You've got to go back, though, to the Monday night game. Yeah. Your father passed away. Yeah. And you just threw balls that everybody made plays on. I mean, yeah. it was one of the most incredible moments, I think, in NFL history. Yeah, you're right. I, I could not have played any better. And that's what I wanted to do to honor my father. Yeah. And, and Tom knows when his mother was ill, a couple of years ago, I, I sent him a couple of messages to try not to inundate him with messages. But um, I just know what that what that's like. And you want to play. You always want to play great. But when you're playing in the circumstances that I played in and others have played in, Tom uh, played in, you, there's an elevated sense of I really want to do this recently as, as I thought about it you know I, I probably like most people I thought you know God just sh show yourself I, you know I need to know if you're real you know selfishly and what happened was what I believe is that was the sign I was looking for it has made it easier because I know he's up there and he's proud um, and you know what a way to honor him yeah well, I mean, speaking oh. as a fan who was sitting at home watching that, I mean, everyone was rooting for you, and the fact that you not only met the moment but exceeded it was just overwhelming for just anybody who was just yeah. sitting at home watching it through the television screen. 
Well, I, I knew my dad would want me to play, and you know I love him so much, and and, and, and love this game, and it's 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 uh, it's meant a great deal to me, to my dad, and to my family, and and. Uh, I didn't expect this type of performance, but I know he was watching tonight. This night will be remembered for for Brett Favre. You know, when you think of his career, we're going to think of a lot of things, the Super Bowl and tremendous performances, but I think tonight's going to rank very close to the top. His dad was tough on him growing up, and, you know, he, he, he made a tough son. Coach would always say stuff like, well, he'll be there. You know, you worry about, you know, I know he's on the injury report, but don't worry. He's missed, you know, he hasn't missed a game in seven, you know, 15 years. You know, he'll be there. You know, don't, don't you, don't you even think about him not playing. And that's how he was. You know, his teammates knew that he was going to be there every single week. And when you can count on that, I think it gives so much confidence to all the other guys. And it sets a tone for everyone else that they better be there too. Well, it's only fitting that your teammates are. Trey, now. Five-time MVP, 14-time Pro Bowler. Three-man rush. He bounces around and throws. Touchdown! Move over, Brett Favre. Peyton Manning now has more touchdown passes than any other player in NFL history. And two-time Super Bowl champion, and he was destined, obviously, to be on this team since playing backyard football with Archie Cupper as they say, and Eli, and it is time now to bat around Peyton Manning. You saw him practice, no doubt, many times calling his games. Chris, what was that like? Uh, the most unusual. One of the things I love about my job is I get to watch practice. Nobody else gets to watch it. And so Peyton would come out before practice, and he would have the game plan, and he would stuff it in his shorts and hang out. And before they got to calisthenics, he would jog them through the entire practice. So the offense ran the entire practice. Then they go to calisthenics, and then they come back, and Peyton Manning did the exact same thing with full speed. There was not a coach involved. There was not anybody saying a word other than Peyton Manning, so that by the time they got on the field for game day, they were used to hearing one voice and one voice only. Yeah. And I don't know how involved he was in making that game plan. I don't know if he went in a room and a puff of smoke went up and Peyton's ready. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah. But it was unbelievable to see him effectively run the show in practice. That doesn't happen in our practices. No, so no I've know? seen your practice no, too, yeah. No. We let you into ours? Every once in a while. <laughs> right. Every once in a while. You gotta tighten up the security a little bit. <laughs> I'll say. You know, Peyton was such a, you know, spectacular player and you know, with so many of our we had so many great games against him. Be on the other sideline, you know, you just knew that the margin of error was razor thin. He was a relentless competitor and I think he had incredible expectation. I think one thing I really admire, you know, I felt like I was a hundred and ninety nine pick. I had a year where I, you know, essentially could just learn and not play with no expectation. I mean, he was first pick overall. He's probably the top rated recruit in high school and then ends up having, you know, the most prolific career mm -hmm. of anybody that's ever played. So I think that speaks a lot about him and the expectation, then meeting expectation as well. And I think only he himself could really match his expectation. He was that type of athlete and competitor. Your first career start was against him. Yeah. yeah. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I ran on the field and, you know, like any young kid, I ran up to the other quarterback and said, hey, Peyton shook his hand. I saw Tom. He's like, I know who you are. And I thought, man, that's really cool. You know, <laughs> Peyton Manning knows who I am. And, uh, you know, just to compete against him, we had so many great games because, you know, they were in the AFC and, you know, we knew that at the start of the year, we were going to have to go through them or they were going to have to come through us. And um, it went that way for a long time mm -hmm. up until he basically retired at the end of Super Bowl 50. Soul Train alert, 13 trap, hold one. No question, hands down the rivalry of the decade. I mean, we would talk about him so much and he altered our game plan offensively, you know, just by him being on the other sideline, which speaks to the level of play that he consistently showed. You know, I think for all of us that are football fans, those matchups were like the ultimate yeah. matchups. And you talked about changing the game plan. It actually happened to you one time, I think. I was calling the game yeah. the oh, famous yeah. fourth and two, going. right? And you decided you were going to go for it, that your odds, I'm reading yeah. your mind yeah, here, no doubt. Yeah. were better that you were going to complete a two-yard pass than if we punted this thing back to Peyton. If they go for this, I am going to be absolutely stunned. I should never be stunned by Bill Belichick.
I don't, that, that much surprises me with, uh, with, with New England. Uh, you, you kind of expect uh, the unexpected. And the Patriots are going to go for it on fourth down. I can't believe this. You know, certainly when you see him stopped on third down, you get excited, you get the ball. And when you see him going for it on fourth down, I, I, I can't lie. You, you know, obviously, you, know, you certainly get a little nervous because you realize, hey, they, they might, obviously, you might get a short field, but, uh, but the game might be over. He's going for the win right here. And they really do go for it. And do they make it? Here's what happened. Kevin Falk was bobbling the ball. So instead of getting forward progress, they forked him down where he actually landed on the ground. Absolutely. They're going to be short. I think there'll be a few things to talk about after this game. Okay. Holy mackerel. And ultimately incomplete. They did score, and everybody said, What's Bill doing? But what were you thinking? I was thinking one play to win the game. Um, but, you know, just you want to give him the ball as few times as possible. He was very difficult to prepare for. I remember one of the <laughs> long conversations uh, Peyton and I had was out of the Pro Bowl. And it was uh, after we had practiced, if you want to call it that, uh, at the Pro Bowl. And we're <laughs> sitting around the pool. And we were there for about four hours. And it was four hours of talking football. And, and we were kind of talking about the Pro Bowl. and in that game, but in the end, it was me trying to ask him questions that he didn't want to answer for four hours, and him asking me questions about football that I wasn't answering for four hours, <laughs> yeah. and went back and forth trying to figure out what the other guy was thinking and what the other guy was doing without yeah. saying anything. I'd that, like you to know, have been there, fly on the wall for Oh, that, my yeah. God. It was classic. We walked out of there, <laughs> and I felt good about it, and he felt good about it, but in the end, I didn't really get anything out of it. I, don't, <laughs> and I hope he didn't either. <laughs> it was interrogation at its best. He was, you know, he was just trying to get a little nugget. And, and Peyton would probably be a hard nugget to get from. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd be giving information like crazy. <laughs> what about the Manning family? I know that you said growing up where you did in Mississippi. That you know, you I grew were... up 50 miles from the, from the Superdome. And the Saints, uh, it was some lean years. It was always next year, but the, there was Archie. Being able to, to follow Archie and then have a chance 